If you are starting dynamic programming, one of the fundamental algorithms you'll get exposed to is the knapsack problem. But something that a lot of students find confusing is its runtime, which is pseudo-polynomial. It looks polynomial, but it's actually exponential. In this video, we're going to look at why this is the case, and why it's an important distinction. But first, let's take a quick look at the knapsack problem. There are many variations of this problem, but for simplicity, we're going to be using knapsack with repetition, where the values are equal to the weights. In this problem, we have a bag with a fixed capacity, perhaps 15 kilos, and we need to select certain items to fill this bag with. And when doing this, we want to try and maximize the weight utilization of the bag. If we want to solve the knapsack problem using dynamic programming, we're going to break it down into smaller subproblems. T of i is going to be the maximum value that we can achieve using the different items up to a total weight of less than or equal to i. We'll calculate this for all values of i up to the capacity b, and the solution to the overall problem is going to be the table entry at b. In the recurrence relation, we first set up our base case. T of 0 is equal to 0. For values of i greater than 0, we're going to consider the different items we could take. For each item we can take, we're going to consider how much value it contributes and how much value can be made from the remaining weight, which can be found by looking back at previous values in the table. At i, we will take the largest such item and whatever items were taken in the previous table entry. Note that this process is mathematically recursive, so by looking back at the previous table entries, we're going to consider all possible combinations and we're guaranteed to find the global optima for this problem. The pseudocode can be trivially derived from this recurrence relation. It involves a loop up to b, and inside of this, a nested loop over all of the items, where we're going to take the maximum value over the possible choices, including the previous table entries. The total runtime of this algorithm is therefore going to be O of b, multiplied by O of n, which is overall O of n b. This looks polynomial, and the algorithm itself feels familiar and polynomial, but it's actually exponential. To see why, we'll need to revisit the definition of big O runtimes. The definition of big O runtime is based around how the runtime of our algorithms grow as the size of the input grows, but note that this is the size of the input, not its magnitude. From looking at the pseudocode, it's obvious to see that if we were to increase b from 15 to 30, or double n from 4 to 8, that the algorithm is going to take about twice as long. So let's have a look at how these changes impact on the input size. We use binary to represent integers in memory, so the capacity b will be a single 4-bit integer. The items w are an array of four 4-bit integers. b is therefore 4 bits long, while w is 16 bits long. Now let's double both and see what happens. b becomes 30, which is a 5-bit integer. w now has some extra items and has become 32 bits long, exactly double the length of what it was before. With algorithms, we are used to working with arrays, and this is what we would typically see. b, on the other hand, is a bit problematic. As we intuitively saw earlier, doubling b from 15 to 30 would double its runtime, but the size of the input has only increased by one bit. This is why the knapsack algorithm is pseudo-polynomial. Note that this occurs whenever we have an integer input in our runtime analysis that is not bound by the size of one of the other inputs. It's not a phenomenon that's unique to the knapsack problem. Recall that n is simply the size of w. With an array like w, we can assume that all inputs are of the same size. This means we can treat the size of a single element as a constant. The size of the array therefore grows linearly with n, as we also saw with its runtime. b is an integer, however, so its size will grow logarithmically, despite the fact that the runtime grew linearly with the value of b. Formally, the runtime of the knapsack algorithm is polynomial in n and b but n is a size, while b is a value. b takes log of b bits to represent, so if we want a truly polynomial algorithm, we need an O of n log b algorithm. But there's no currently known polynomial algorithm for the knapsack problem. The dynamic programming algorithm presented earlier is actually exponential, as we're effectively taking 2 to the power of the input size. We call algorithms that are polynomial in the value of their inputs, but exponential in the size of those inputs, pseudo-polynomial algorithms. So why does this distinction matter? Why don't we just call them exponential time algorithms? The reason is that sometimes these algorithms behave like polynomial time algorithms. If the input number can be constrained to a constant, or tied to the size of another input, then the runtime becomes polynomial time again. Additionally, in the real world, algorithms like the knapsack dynamic programming algorithm can perform almost as well as polynomial time algorithms, as we generally keep the input sizes quite small. On the other hand, 
These algorithms sometimes behave like exponential time algorithms. The knapsack problem and variants like the subset sum problem are very useful as generic black boxes to many hard combinatorial problems. But doing this often involves using extremely large numbers where the exponential time behavior becomes very apparent. Ultimately, if the knapsack problem could be solved in polynomial time, so could all of those hard combinatorial problems, and would imply that p is equal to np, which would be contrary to what most researchers believe. In summary, the size of arrays grows linearly with the number of elements n. This means that we can safely think of runtimes in terms of cardinality rather than the size in memory. The size of numbers grows logarithmically, as it depends on their binary representations. This means that we can't think of runtimes in terms of a value for a number. As the knapsack algorithm uses a number as one of its inputs, we therefore consider it to have a pseudo-polynomial runtime. I hope you learned something from this video. This is one of my first videos, and on my channel I'll be making videos about algorithms and computer science. If you found this video useful, I'd appreciate it if you considered liking the video or subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.